everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot to us that so many of you have turned up, um, especially since you know, the weather's not so great today. It's a little bit cold, so it's nice that everyone's been here with us. Um, as the as Rhino mentioned quite animatedly earlier, <laughs> so this social media book has really been a big part of our lives for the past one year, and we really hope that it brings the benefits and the results that we were looking for um, when you read it. So as the mother of the book, um, what I'd like to do is very briefly take you through the key points of the book, um, some of the key highlights that we think actually differentiate the book um, in the market. So to start off um, at the point where Andre left off, the social customer. The social customer is actually um, what we've seen from Amit's presentation is actually quite an important group. Um, the social customer can actually help a company differentiate itself. It can make a company more relevant in today's times. So using social technologies to communicate and interact with the customer is actually a really good way to help companies differentiate themselves. And as Amit also demonstrated in his presentation, the, um, it's not a small group. We're not just talking about our kids and <coughs> the next generation of customers, but these groups are already relevant today. And so businesses need to start looking at how they can better interact and how they can better change and adapt to the, uh, to, in order to communicate better with the social customers. Um, companies, we've actually seen companies starting to um, use a lot more social media. They started to adapt. Um, adopt social media for business. And we've seen this happen at various levels of maturity. Some companies have started by jumping right in and exploring various different channels. They've also started um, using different engagement tactics and really started to communicate with customers. Others have taken a more conservative approach <coughs> and really started looking internally what are the policies and procedures that are required and how they can better prepare themselves for social media use in business. What I've observed, though, is that many companies, um, in many companies, the marketing and corporate communication teams tend to be the dominant users of social media. So that results, basically, in social media initiatives that tend to be um, shorter term, and they don't focus so much, or there's less of a link to the business objectives, and it's more channel-driven. So looking more <coughs> at how to engage with customers and how to get quicker results so if I speak to people and ask them, what's your social media strategy? This is the typical um, result that you get, or the typical answer they would give. The social media strategy is typically very um, channel driven. So we're talking about Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. I mean, if you look at it, um, Pinterest has been around for three years, but all of a sudden it's become you know, the next best thing, or the best thing since sliced bread. So, uh, really, people are really looking at the channels and how to engage on those channels. And there's very little link back to what your business objectives are and how you can drive more sustainable benefits from social media. The problem with this is this is more of a tactical plan than a social media strategy. And what happens is companies end up hitting a roadblock at a certain point. Because after that point, it's very difficult to demonstrate sustainable returns or sustainable business impact. It gets really hard to demonstrate business impact to the C-level management. It gets harder to get their buy-in and secure future investments for social media. So what happens is social media ends up staying at that exploration phase where people are exploring the channels but not actually being able to use it for business impact. In order to successfully use social media for business, there has to be a very clear, strong link to your business objectives or business goals. And you have to also take into consideration um, the business context that you're in. So really looking at what your business goals are and how you can translate that or, or how social media can impact that. Some examples of companies like uh, Coca-Cola, Red Bull, uh, Starbucks, General Motors, I mean, these companies have one thing in common. They are very successful with social media use because they have very clear um, links between their social media initiatives and their business goals. So they really understand what these channels can do and how they can impact their business. One of the biggest challenges that we face with social media is the question on return on investments. 
and this is probably something that you thought about as well before. How do you get returns for your social media initiatives? Like how do you define what your um, returns on your investments are? And the reason this is such a difficult question is because nine out of 10 times, your social media initiatives have little link to your business goals. And they're more channel driven and more engagement tactics driven. So the more I spoke to people about social media, the more I um, did work in this topic, the more I realized there was a need for a structured approach to elevate social media to a more strategic level to really get it to a point where you can link it to your business objectives and demonstrate sustainable value. And based on that thinking, um, I developed the social media strategy framework. So this is the sneak peek of the framework. Um, basically, it's, um, there, it links your social media initiatives very closely back to your business goals, and it takes into consideration your business context. So what kind of business you're in, who your target audiences are, and really what you want to achieve for social media within what time frame. The framework itself has two parts. The first part is the um, strategy development phase, which is the part that helps you start looking at social media from a more strategic perspective. How does it link to your business goals? What are the key or burning questions that your business has currently and how social media could potentially impact those? The second part, or phase two actually looks at how you can successfully implement social media. So actually implementing the initiatives. And in phase two, you will also find that it's split or it distinguishes between enterprise collaboration and business 2.0. So enterprise collaboration focuses on your internal audience. So people, your employees that work in the company, management teams, line managers, whatever your target audiences are within the organization. And Business 2.0 then focuses on the external target audience. So um, co some companies have actually initiated social media in both these areas at the same time. Some companies have selected one area to start with. Um, doesn't matter which point you're at, but what we have seen is that many companies tend to start from this point of social media implementation, skipping the entire strategy development phase in the beginning. So if we zoom in a little bit more into the um, phase one, what we find is that um, there are several key things that we do within phase one, really to identify what your business goals are, what are you trying to achieve as a business, what are some of the burning questions that you have or the key challenges that you face, and really starting to <coughs> explore how social media can then um, help directly or indirectly contribute to those business goals. Right. And this is really where you want to bring together people in your organization that have a strong understanding of business and the business goals, and people who have a good understanding of social media and its potential. And this is where you mesh the two kind of knowledge bases and really try to understand how social media can then be used to deliver on some of your business goals. Um, another key aspect here in phase one is also to look at visioning. So you want to really have a good understanding for what your business currently uses social media for and how ready you are to currently use social media. Are you good to go? Do you have current um, roadblocks that you have to address? One example would be many companies today still block their employees from using social media. Right? And this is a big question that needs to be answered before you start using social media for business. Who your target audiences are, who would have access. Um, and visioning, the visioning exercise really helps you understand where you're at, it's a self-reflection piece. Where you're at today, how ready are you for social media, and where you want to get to within what time frame. So that's uh, quite an important exercise to do. Um, the next part is really looking at the strategic measures. So trying to identify measures at a strategic level for social media initiatives, linking directly back to your business goals. And this could be qualitative or quantitative measures, it could be um, direct impact or indirect impact, but really looking at a more strategic level directly into your business goals. Um, another unique aspect of phase one are the eight key considerations. Um, using social media for business isn't like using it as a private individual. So the risks are augmented. The impact is also much higher. So you want to make sure that you strike a balance between using social media um, governing social media use for business, but also encouraging creativity. 
So to try and find the right balance of that. And one way to do that would be to look at these eight elements within your organization, how established they are, and how ready they are to actually start um, using social media. So here we have a very quick example of how to link um, social media to your business goals. And this is typical result that you would get from phase one, where you really try to understand what your business goals are, break those down to some business drivers or strategic measures, and then try to find or explore how social media can then impact those measures. So an example here would be a private bank um, that's looking to increase their revenue for work management business. Um, so one business driver could be that they're trying to target the 35 to 50 year old people to get inbound leads. And um, social media could then be used to actually provide more information on investment, or you could actually create even an app where people can um, define their online risk profiling. So that could be one solution. And what you really want to do is try to define whether this is a business 2.0 or enterprise collaboration type. Um, opportunity. At phase one, we steer clear of all engagement tactics, channels, um, discussion about content, um, technical measures, all of those things come in phase two. Here we're really focusing on what your business objectives are and how social media can contribute to that. A second example, technology developer that's looking to improve the um, product innovation cycle. So here they would like to reduce the amount of time taken from generating an idea for a new product to the point of creating a prototype. And so one example could be to use social media to create an online platform for employees to rank and assess and feedback on ideas that employees have come up with for new products. So this would be an example of an enterprise collaboration type um, solution. So really what you want to do here is um, and this, these kind of exercises can be done through meeting sessions, through workshops, through brain, brainstorming sessions, and a, a lot more detail of that is provided in the book, is described further in the book. But really what you want to do is identify some of your business goals and then explore quite openly how social media could then contribute to that. And then later on we actually would assess and prioritize these initiatives based on what's pragmatic to implement in your company. This is um, part of the visioning exercise that we do in phase one as well. And it's quite an interesting um, piece of work to do because, as I said earlier, it provides a little bit of self-reflection in terms of where you are at today with social media use, if you're even using it, um, and how well you're using it or how well you're engaging on these channels, <coughs> and where you want to get to within which time frame. So it could be that you decide in the next three years, I want to go from listening to social media channels to the point of communicating with my customers. So more information on this is actually provided. Uh, we have posters hanging around, so you can actually read up on it in more detail. And um, we also have a tool online. Uh, we'll provide the information to you after the presentation. So you can go and try out the tool and find out where your company sits in terms of social media readiness and how far, and really have a think about how far you want to get to with social media use in business. One key question um, that always comes up around social media is how do I get the CRM management buy-in? Right, this is an interesting topic, uh, which I think we'll go into a little bit more during the panel discussion. But here I have a couple of tips that could help you. So speaking the C-level language, really when you're trying to convince management about social media, you can't talk to them about likes and tweets and you know number of followers because those things, essentially they don't provide business results and they, you know, you're talking French to them basically, unless they understand French. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> basically what you're trying to do is elevate the, like, the um, conversation to the business language. You want to talk to them about what are the manager's top five goals for the year. And typically managers, they do have top five goals. I don't know, maybe it's just you know, five because it fits in one hand. But you really do have the top five goals that management people have um, to focus on every year. And you want to try and understand those goals and communicate to them how social media can then impact those goals and how they can 
directly or indirectly contribute to those. You also want to use data to convince them. So use listening tools to understand what kind of topics are being discussed on social media channels about the brand, about the company. What are some of the key concerns from customers? What have been, what's being said about your peers? And really provide them that information in a very structured manner to say, we are being discussed already on social media. And the question is whether you want to get involved in them, those discussions or not. You also want to highlight to them some of the key outcomes achieved. So um, really talk to them, again, not about, you know, we have 100,000 followers or we've had 30 retweets today, but really talk to them about um, the relationships that you've built with current and potential customers on social media channels. And talk to them about how these relationships could ge generate leads, for example. From the 100,000 likes, it could be you could generate 100 leads, 100 real leads for your business. So you want to elevate the discussion to the most strategic level. Also take the opportunity to educate them on social media. So I find that many C-level executives are either afraid of social media because they don't understand it and all they see are risks, or they dismiss it because they think it's a marketing tool. You know, let it go to marketing, they'll, they'll manage it somehow. So you really want to use time that you have to converse with them to educate them about what are the potential of social media. And you can use use cases from other companies, you can use interesting stories, um, also use data, for example, and really try to show them the link between engaging with customers or engaging even with employees on social media channels to their business goals, to the focus areas for them. And finally, you want to create a sense of urgency. So you want to scare them a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, enough that they'll fork out some investment to further your social media initiative. But really you want to talk to them about um, what are the brand reputation risks that are that they're facing, whether they're involved in social media or not. There is a risk, and you want to talk to them about that. You want to bring up the fact that many of your competitors and peers are already on social media, right? So it's about whether they want to get engaged and involved as well. So these are some of the tips that could be useful when you're talking to your um, executives and trying to get buy-in for social media. And really, getting buy-in is quite important because Social media, will, you won't be able to take it to the next level, to the most strategic level, unless you have a sponsor in your company that's willing to, to invest in it and to take responsibility for social media. And finally, let's zoom into the um, phase two. And I'm not going to go too much into this because you will be able to read about it in the book. But this phase really focuses on um, how you can actually convert or how you can implement the social media strategy successfully. Right? And here again, one of the key points that I'd like to highlight are the focus areas. And focus areas here are really <coughs> specific areas within which you can build your solution. Um, it's interesting to actually focus down on these areas because you can define very clear approaches or projects for social media that will bring in the results that you're looking for once you start to focus down on them. You can also start to identify target audiences, and this is a very critical one. You need to understand who you're trying to target, what channels these people use, what kind of content we like to, to, to view, and what kind of content they tend to share more or they tend to communicate or post more about. And you really want to understand, and this applies to internal and external target audiences as well, to so your employees or even your customers. Define clear use cases. And that's also another important point in phase two, where you want to identify how these people currently use these channels and how you're going to start engaging with them and communicating with them. So real use cases, how you're going to be part of those conversations. Plan content and channels. Now this is the easy part. Once you've defined the first three things, the content and channel uh, becomes easy because you know who you're targeting, you know what kind of content they like, you know what channels they're going to be using, and so it makes it a lot easier to define this. And finally, one very important point, whether you're using social media to communicate internally with your employees or externally with customers, employees need to be trained on the benefits of social media, on the potential, on the risks that exist for using it in business, and really help them understand what are the boundaries for within which they can use social media. So that's my very quick presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'm really happy to answer them. 
I will be here later um, at the upper room, hopefully not talking as fast as I am. But um, we can have a nice con conversation, and you can also connect with me online. Um, and now I'd like to leave you with a quick video about the book, and hand over to Tanya. Thank you.